Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, brief video. It's based on the presentation I gave at our departmental meeting in September 2017 called See One, Do One, Teach One. And it's a presentation revolving around the whole notion of senior fellowship of the Higher Education Academy, which I'm hoping we can promote throughout our department in a particular strategic manner. This isn't a Pecha Kucha, because a Pecha Kucha should be 20 slides in 20 seconds, but um, I'm having to spend a little bit more than 20 seconds on some of them, so it's not quite a Pecha Kucha. And what I'd like to do in the session, first of all, is to set the scene so that you understand the difference between the different layers of fellowship of the Higher Education Academy, and then demonstrate the benefits of it for us as teachers within the department um, with this particular model of see one, do one, teach one, encouraging a cascade approach to mentorship throughout the department. Now, obviously, this is going to be like trying to sell sand uh, to people who have got loads and loads of sand, because we're all experienced teachers. We've all been around the block a few times, and no doubt we all go that extra mile for our students. So when the National Student Survey comes, comes in and it's not quite as complimentary as we would have liked, then there's a mismatch between what we know and what we're doing compared to how the students perceive this. So that's why I'm using the critical theme throughout this, so that uh, uh, the, throughout this presentation, so that we can actually see that yes, there is a need for us to uh, to do something more about it. And no doubt we'll all agree that um, we're in our prime as teachers. Uh, many of us have come from professional or clinical backgrounds and into teaching. And therefore, when we stand before our classes, whether online or in classroom, we've got a lot of experience by which we can uh, deliver the sessions that we are actually delivering. But our students don't always get a sense of that. They may not know too much about us as individuals and see all that goes into our multi-potentialite careers to bring us to the point of who we are now today and dare I say it but if you want to let them know that there's steak for dinner then you have to let them hear it sizzle and I apologize to our vegetarian and vegan colleagues for that quote. For those of you that want to know more about um, uh, senior fellowship. I've already made a video and put it on our departmental Moodle site and that explains exactly what senior fellowship is and how to go about it. So this presentation is slightly different because it's the approach in which we take to senior fellowship that I'd like us to explore here. Uh, just as I sat down to, 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 to make this original presentation, I tried to uh, mind map or brainstorm on 10 good reasons why I should try and convince you uh, to do it. And here they are, each of them on the screen here. So for one reason, it brings together and consolidates so much of our continuing personal and professional development that we're doing. When we go off and do little courses or study days or uh, a few hours here and there, it's a way of drawing that together and showing how all of that integrates. But it also doubles up for our peer observation of teaching that we're all expected to see and to do um, uh, e each year. It'll also support those of us who are nurses, midwives and health visitors for our revalidation processes and vice versa. We can use some of that material as well for the senior fellowship um, application. But it also catalogues the seniority of our ongoing experiences. When uh, people qualify now as newly qualified teachers with the PG Cert HE, they automatically come out with fellowship of the Higher Education Academy. This shows that we've we've had some extra years and extra experiences that, that take us over and above the initial teacher qualification. It can also give us a focus for our appraisal and our um, achievements so that when we do come to our annual appraisal either we can set the goal of trying to achieve senior fellowship in the next academic year or maybe we have achieved it and look at ways in which we can move on from there. Um, another good selling point is that this is a free initiative. If you wanted to do it just by yourselves to pay the Higher Education Academy for it, it costs quite a bit of money, whereas the university has brought it in as an in-house development programme. 
And um, it also gives the opportunity to gather evidence together, to present to your students. Um, I've been lucky to, to, to mentor quite a few people in this past year, and the stuff I've learned about them um, has been absolutely wonderful. And if that's shared more with our students, they'll actually realise the clinical, professional and teaching expertise that goes in to make each and every one of us. As Burgess, Saminsky and Arthur say, it enables us to synthesise layers of intensity and perspective. And also it gives, it gives us a chance to demonstrate our multi-potentialite uh, dimensions of our careers. And by that it means for all the different jobs we've ever, ever held, taking the best out of each of those as we move forward into the next one, bringing us to where we are today. So it's not that we've had clinical lives or professional lives or different career careers in the past and now we're doing this one, we're actually building on the great potential from each of those and drawing them into where we are today. But also, as you'll see from the little clip from the University of East London down in the bottom, uh, it's now being required by universities, even our own university, for promotion within the institution, and it's increasingly being required by other institutions when people apply for jobs elsewhere. So let's go back to the theme of see one, do one, teach one. Well, first of all, we've got a number of different fellows within our department. All of the new qualified teachers that we have already have fellowship of the Higher Education um, Academy. So there are two different routes to fellowships within the Higher Education Academy. One is the National Teaching Fellowship Scheme, which is set against what's called the Claim for Excellence. And then there are the various um, other layers of fellowship, which are set against the United Kingdom Professional Standards Framework. When a person becomes um, a National Teaching Fellow, they're automatically enrolled in the Association of National Teaching Fellows and can gain membership of the International Federation of National Teaching Fellows. Um, and with the UK PSF, it shows clear descriptors right from Associate all the way through to Principal Fellow. So the National Teaching Fellowship Scheme, that's actually based on this claim for excellence uh, within teaching. As you can see by what it says here, that there are 55 made in every, um, every academic year. And the one we had for 2016 was Jenny Field, who's in education and in our own uh, faculty. And when it comes to the, um, uh, the United Kingdom Professional Standards Framework, these are the four uh, descriptors, the four levels of fellowship. Now, our support staff and PhD students who are doing some teaching for us, they can apply for associate fellow. There are different ways in which they do it, so they don't have to be uh, physically teaching, but supporting teaching and learning. So our uh, um, uh, support staff could certainly look at uh, going towards associate fellow status. As I mentioned earlier, all those with qualified teacher status now come out with fellowship as well. And what we're looking at here is the senior fellowship. So it's for teachers who have a number of years experience and can demonstrate that in different ways. The difference then between senior and principal fellow, the forms, are, uh, 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 the, the requirements are quite different here because whereas the one is showing seniority in teaching practice, the principal fellow is looking for strategic leadership within learning. So we've seen one, we've got a few within the department, uh, now time to do one. So uh, if, if, if you want to look at uh, how to do this, go onto the GOLD website. When you go onto the uni university website, type in the word GOLD, click the button that says um, uh, website, and you'll see all the documentation there. And that's the formal place where we all have to go to to look at doing any of these layers of fellowship. But I've also made um, a brief video, as I mentioned earlier, that I've put on our departmental website and that explains more on how to do this, where to go for it and um, uh, uh, certainly on how to plan it, achieving it. So once we've seen one, once we've done one, now what I'm encouraging us all to do is to teach one. And what I'm hoping we can do is to cascade these fellowships right across the department. I sent out um, a uh, 
a doodle poll just a few weeks ago asking uh, everyone in the department what lay, lay, level of fellowship they already have. I've had quite a few responses, but as you can see, the red means not yet. And as far as senior fellowship is concerned, the majority of staff within our department do not have senior fellowship. You'll see for fellowship, um, there are quite a number with that already, and that's because there are newly qualified colleagues. And what I'm proposing we do is look across the academic year to see who can achieve senior fellowship within each uh, with e within each of the terms. At the moment I'm uh, mentoring over a dozen people on this and what I'm hoping for is that quite a few will go through in term one and even if this doesn't happen this year we can set it as a strategic goal within the department to start next year but if quite a few went through in term one and then if each of those started mentoring somebody in term two and I could mentor the mentors and by the end of term two, we could have another significant number through that if each one that got it in term one and term two then applied themselves to mentoring people in term three, theoretically, by the end of the academic year, we could have most people within the department who want to go for senior fellowship actually having applied for it and hopefully achieved it. So... Uh, you may be wondering what's involved in this. So this little diagram that's going to come up now will actually show us all the elements that's involved. First of all, you need to agree to mentor somebody. So once you've got senior fellowship and if somebody asks you, would you mentor them, consider that relationship with them. That person then needs to get their line manager signature. Easy enough, they just print off a form and take it to the line manager and get this authorised. It's then important that they go to one of the gold meetings. So if you check on the gold website, it'll tell you exactly when all those meetings are taking place. And the mentor and the mentee need to go together. As I've been to quite a few of these now, the gold team realised that I can't always turn up at each and every one of them, so I still spend at least an hour with a person in the initial uh, phase to work through them exactly what they'll go through on their gold meeting. So if they go to the gold meeting without me, one of the t team from the gold, uh, uh, the gold staff, they'll actually do the work that I would have been doing with them. But you can show that we've done it already. Then I'm encouraging you all to watch the video I've placed on the Family Care and Mental Health Moodle site. Uh, then at some point, you need to get your mentor to do your peer observation of teaching. Now, obviously, the, the mentor can also fill out the form for the faculty requirements for this as well. So it means you, you're not having to repeat the, uh, the peer observation of teaching. Do it once and have two different forms for that. Then it's important that the person starts filling out the form and reflecting on it. It's not a case of sitting down and writing it up as if they're doing an assignment. This really is a reflective uh, um, initiative. So they need to spend time in doing this and they're required to write 15 little vignettes. I think on the form it says 12 to 15, but the advice being given is always aim for 15 just in case some of them aren't uh, terribly appropriate and then the, the panel have to disregard some of them. So it's best to go for the maximum number. You write 15 little vignettes and uh, four case studies. Okay, now it's good then to show that to your mentor, even if it's in an unfinished state, so at least the mentor can comment on it, give you suggestions, look at ways of exploring things differently, for example, do all of that before they then see the final form and then write up their reference. So you need two references. One is from a person you choose as a referee and one is your mentor. But the mentor writes this up based on the peer observation of teaching and in relation to the document that you've put in. Now, for mentors, how long is this going to take? Uh, well, I reckon about six hours per person. First of all, you need the one hour meeting with them, uh, w w uh, with the goal team. As I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, if I can't be with somebody, then I still spend that hour with them before they go to their gold meeting. So it's one hour to that. Then the average uh, teaching session is about two hours. So you do your peer observation of teaching and then you may be seeing a draft version 
of that application form and the final one that you need to write your reference on. So that could take anything from one to three hours, really. Um, but then also, if you all decide to go for this cascade approach, then obviously, uh, for those of you who are going to be new to mentoring senior fellowship, we can arrange the goal team to come in and do a training session with us, or I'm more than willing to do it as well. And the goal team are really on board with all of this. Um, if you've got any questions about the presentation, please feel free to chat to me at any point or email me or post them on the Moodle site even. Uh, we've got our Family Care and Mental Health Moodle site and you'll see there's one whole block there for staff development. So feel free to use the, um, uh, the forum site there. We tell our students to do it often enough so we could have a go at doing it as well. All right. And all the, uh, uh, the physical documents you need, the details are on the Gold website. OK, thank you very much for listening, and I really hope this is going to be a great success. If we can roll it out across our department, we'll be the first department in the university to actually have close on to 100% of staff um, with senior fellowship. And I'm hoping then that the university will take this model and roll it out right across the university. And it'll help us achieve um, some more of the strategic plan for our university. Thank you all so much for listening. Bye-bye.